ذرا سی بات پہ ہر رسم توڑ آیا تھا دل تباہ نے کیسا مزاج پایا تھا پتہ نہیں کہ میرے بعد ان پہ کیا گزری میں چند خواب زمانے میں چھوڑ آیا تھا غم کی اندھیری رات میں آنکھوں ہی آنکھوں میں اشارہ ہو گیا large number of uh, in, Indian films as you know Bollywood uh, there is besides the hero heroine and villain there's also another very important actor in all the movies and that's called God God is a serious player you know so for example if you randomly picked up 10 Hollywood movies and randomly picked up 10 Bollywood movies you in Hollywood movies God is only there if the movies about God or about church or something but in Indian movies God is in every movie and it's a serious player it's not passive only that you go and cry god sheds a tear then he drops a flower you know so i mean he's he's in there he's getting there and always involved now all the bhajans are directed to the god all the solace seeking is in hindi bhajans of indian bollywood bhajans and songs is either seeking from god or somebody admonishing you to god there is no song except one that Akhtar Sahib has written in which God speaks and responds to what the man is saying. غم کی اندھیری رات میں دل کو نبے قرار کر صبح ضرور آئے گی صبح کا انتظار کر The man says خود ہی تڑپ کے رہ گئے تلت انرفی خود ہی تڑپ کے رہ گئے ہم کو وفا سے کیا ملا آگ سے کھیلتے رہے ہم کو وفا سے کیا ملا اینی وے تو دین رفی ایز گاڈ ریسپونس خود سے تو بدگمانہ ہو خود پہ تو اعتبار کر صبح ضرور آئے گی صبح کا انتظار کر اور اینی وے دس ڈائلاگ یو نو دس از اونلی سانگ ویئر دا کیمرا آف کورس گاڈ موز اینڈ مون اینڈ کلاؤڈ آر سپوز ٹو ریپرزینٹ دا گاڈ بیکاز یو نو Uh, somehow we still feel God is up there he cannot be down there so the camera doesn't go down under the table you know which is kind of a silly childish belief but uh, nonetheless a very interesting experimental song I think uh, now besides these three qualities another interesting aspect is that he went through three phases of writing in the beginning a traditional uh, love poetry that had to be written by children of poets and people growing up in a certain social class with a certain kind of mentality. And he was, I think, a relatively B minus class uh, poet uh, in his early days. Then he wrote uh, sort of what was Progressive Writers uh, Association poetry and some rather uh, explicit uh, pro-Stalinist poetry and pro-Mao and all those things in, in uh, late 40s and early 50s. The better poems began, one, the two poems about my mother's passing away. And then uh, towards the end of his life, the last three or four years, he uh, discovered a new diction altogether. And what had become in Urdu poetry, the movement called Jadid Shairi. Now, what did Jadid Shairi exemplify? What were the basic tenets or the following? Number one, that we should give up using Farsi Tarakib. That means we would not uh, mend words, two or three words together, like in Persian, with uh, uh, additional words to construct an idea. For example, in Faz, there's a line, very beautiful though. Sabz goshon mein nilgun saye, leh lahate hain jis tarah dil mein mojhe darde firaqe yaar aye. Ab now you mojhe darde firaqe yaar mein, you can imagine as if the green grass is moving. Mojhe darde firaqe yaar aye. Five words make one word. Jadid Shairi decided that we are not going to do this. We are not going to mend two words to create one word. We'll just say one word at a time. The second thing they decided was 
that we will speak in relatively simple language and we will speak not about the social problems, not about capitalism, not about money, not about this in social inequality, but the dilemmas of identity, the dilemmas, inevitable dilemmas of human life as experienced on an individual basis. And the third proposition of Jadil Shari, please understand this is not, I'm just making this up. So I'm, I'm not sure that this is right, but I believe that this is right. Yeah, so I'm, don't take this like, a, don't, you know, that this is what it was. That's what I think it was. The third uh, proposition implied was that we'll not fear talking about human body. And we will not be afraid of talking about sex. Those were the implicit implications of Jadil Shari. Uh, there is a share by Bashir Badr, which is, I think, very evocative, powerful share. Ki pila ke raat ka ras rakshas banati thi. Pila ke raat ka ras rakshas banati thi. Savere logon se kehti thi devta mujko. Now, this, is, this was the flavor of the poetry coming in. Coming in. Now, Akhtar Sahib, who had been a very senior poet, and by and large, people had sort of, it's like an old dinner set that you are not going to use, but you can discard it. So you just put it on mantelpiece or something. So he'd become like this old dinner plates. That's what he'd become like. You know, he was a respectable, decent person. He never deliberately hurt anybody. And he's a good, quiet, shy man. And had reasonable amount of literature produced. So he had been put like as an old dinner set that you're no longer going to use, but it's kind of cute. It reminds you of your grandmother. Suddenly, in the last three years, he started writing poetry all over again. And this time with Jadid poetry. And in fact, he became very popular among the, the younger poets like Hassan Kamal, um, Nida Fazli, um, Sabir Dutt, uh, Bani, all these people, uh, Amir Hanfi, all these people who were just coming up at that time. And he was aware of the peculiar place that he found himself at that time. So he writes a share, Ke fikro fun ki saji hai nai anjuman. This is my father's share. Fikro fun ki saji hai nai anjuman. Hum bhi baithe hai kuch naujawano ke beech. Fikro fun ki saji hai nai anjuman. Hum bhi baithe hai kuch naujawano ke beech. Ye naujawan the ye log jo Nida Fazli, Hasan Kamal, Sabir Dutt. Ye log Akhtar Sahib ke apartment mein, they used to frequent his apartment pretty much every night. And somehow they were also able to manage some bulls. You know, uh, sometimes it was more easily available. Sometimes it was a project, a community project to get a bottle. Uh, but so they'll drink. And he was actually a rather civilized drinker. He'll start around 8 and stop at 10. Even if, you know, he's, uh, there are plenty of liquor left, he'll close it, let's eat food. 10, 30, 11, these people will leave. And my father would walk up to the apartment door, close it, turn around, and look at my stepmother and say the following. This happened every day. Sari Islam kharab ho The whole evening was wasted. Useless conversation. What point is this? That told, terrible, terrible waste of time. And next day, he'll, I think he just could not tolerate what he imagined was the envy of his wife, that he was having so much fun. So he had to immediately, <laughs> immediately you know, he, I think he imagined that his wife will be destructively, greedily envious of his pleasure. So he had to immediately diminish it. And also diminish the gratitude for his young friends and so on and so forth. But this was a very interesting uh, shy denial. You know, I mean, I was not going to talk about him as a father, but I'll just tell one thing, that the letters he wrote to me when I was in USA, uh, till the time he was alive and we had some correspondence, often will end on this sentence. Pata nahi tumhari masroofiyat, tumhe hindustan ki safar ki taraf ijazat dengi ya My daughter is here and she, uh, Nishat, and uh, I'm very happy that she is here, very proud. Uh, now, she is not so proficient in English, therefore I'll translate it for her. So the last sentence of the letter used to be the following. That, uh, I don't know whether your busy life will permit you to travel towards India or not. Sentence number one. Sentence number two. Lekin ye bata dena chata hon ke Bombay mein tumhe log bhoat yaad karte hain. But I want to tell you that people in Bombay miss you a lot. The man couldn't say. Why don't you come and visit me? You know, come on, man, come give me a hug. No. This was a particular kind of shyness that he had. 
And I think this shyness in certain business circles, in certain ruthless markets where literature becomes trade, can also become weakness. And I think he paid a price for that. And I think that is partly the reason why, despite being a grand poet of grand magnitude, he is more or less getting forgotten. And it's very kind, I think, of uh, Lakshanda to arrange this meeting, Parvez Sahib to help with this uh, and such. Because I think a serious uh, attention, serious revival is due. Now, some other uh, Ghazal shares of his last era, because they talk about different kinds of very intricate human emotions in very, very subtle ways and very wise ways. Uh, for example, let's start from trauma and disappointment and how a hurt is handled by some people get hurt and they become vicious outwardly and defiant and rebellious. Some people get hurt and they withdraw inward and then return with a creative product. Subha ki aas kisi lamha jo ghar jati hai. Subha ki aas kisi lamha jo ghar jati hai, zindagi sehem ke khabun se nipad jati hai. So this is one movement about a particular kind of response to trauma. Then another one, gradual disillusionment of various given traditions and bit by bit, as an individual, man or woman, matures, grows up and comes to a certain point, you suddenly realize that all the traditions, all the knowledge you had, will take you only up to this place. And beyond that, you'll have to travel alone. Kis apide ki dohai dijiye, har apida aaj biyogat hai. Then, a sense of sadness, a sense of uh, uh, trepidation about getting old and a kind of worry about the infirmity that waits for you as you get old. There's no reason to be afraid of death because when you'll be dead you would not know that you have died. You know, Because everybody is alive till the time they die and when they die they don't know that they have died. So actually there's no point of getting afraid of death. What is there to fear is infirmity and uh, you know, uh, indignity of illness and handicap. That is a problem. So here the man is getting old and obviously he was not you know, working out you know, and doing all the physical stuff. And I don't think he knew how to hang a picture on the wall. You know? So, uh, but the fear creeps up. So here is a share. Na jane vakt ki raftar kya dikhati hai? Na jane vakt ki raftar kya dikhati hai? Kabhi kabhi to bada khof sa lagya hai mujhe. Na jane vakt ki raftar kya dikhati hai? Kabhi kabhi to bada khof sa lagya hai mujhe. And then another thing, on one side this fear, and on the other side a narcissistic attempt to cover up, narcissistic attempt to cover the gap between aspirations and realities. Pahle haqiqaton se hi matlab tha aur ab Panka sa aapke saath khuda na kare asa ho. Pahle haqiqaton se hi matlab tha aur ab ek aad baad farz bhi karne laga hoon mein. Pahle haqiqaton se hi matlab tha aur ab ek aad baad farz bhi karne laga hoon mein. Ujuli ujuli hui har aas lage मुझको जिंदगी राम का बनवास लगे एक एक लहर किसी युग की कथा एक एक लहर किसी युग की कथा मुझको गंगा कोई इतिहास लगे सो सी हाउ अगेन द लैंग्वेज एंड ऑल देन अबाउट लव रिलेशनशिप्स ऑल लव रिलेशनशिप्स हैव द कांस्टेंट टेंशन वी नो दैट वी वांट टू मर्ज with the other, but we also want to retain our individuality and uh, autonomy and authenticity. And sometimes we believe and fear that we have merged, and sometimes we realize to our desperation that we have not been able to merge despite our efforts. And these tensions exist in any romantic relationship. So now I'll recite two shares which show the dilemma from both sides, from this side and from this side. From this side, Mujay 
تو اس قدر اپنے قریب لگتا ہے مجھے تو اس قدر اپنے قریب لگتا ہے تجھے الگ سے جو سوچوں عجیب لگتا ہے مجھے دس فور نشاط دیٹ اٹ سیز دیٹ لوک یو اپیئر سو کلوز ٹو می اینڈ یو اپیئر سو مچ اے پارٹ آف می اینڈ سو انٹریکٹلی انوالو ود می دیٹ وین آئی تھنک آف یو ایز اے سیپریٹ پرسن آئی ایم ٹوٹلی شاکڈ اباؤٹ اٹ مجھے تو اس قدر اپنے قریب لگتا ہے تجھے الگ سے جو سوچوں عجیب لگتا ہے اینڈ ناؤ دس سیم ڈلیما آف انٹرمیسی اینڈ اٹانومی پرزینٹ فرام دا ادر سائڈ میں تیری ذات میں گم ہو سکا نہ تو مجھ میں میں تیری ذات میں گم ہو سکا نہ تو مجھ میں بہت قریب ہوئے پھر بھی فاصلہ تو رہا دین آئی کوڈ ناٹ گیٹ مرج ود یو اینڈ نور یو ود می اینڈ نو میٹر ہاؤ کلوز وی بیکیم وی ریمین سیپریٹ پیپل سو دس انٹرمیسی ڈلمرز یو نو فرام ڈفرینٹ پرسپیکٹیو اینڈ سچ اینڈ آئی تھنک دس از جدید پوئٹری میں ایک پرانی تہذیب اور پرانی لکھنوی شرمیلا پن کو رکھتے ہوئے بھی وہ جدید شاعری ہے کہ اٹ از ناٹ لائک کہ مرد و سن دیکھتے ہی نہیں گائے جب گائے کا بدن چھٹے تو یہ اس قسم کی شاعری نہیں ہے دیٹ واز آلسو جدید دیٹ واز آلسو جدید پوئٹری ویل پیپل ہیڈ یو نو ریگریسڈ اینڈ دے آر کنسیڈرڈ بینگ اور دیکھی ایز اے سم تھنگ ویری انٹرسٹنگ اور سم تھنگ بٹ ہیئر دیس اے تمیز داری دیز این اولڈ وضا داری ایک اچھی زبان سلیس اور پھر بھی گہری باتیں اور دیکھیے اسی زمانے کے شعر کہ ہیئر از اے سچویشن آف ریمورس اینڈ یو نو ون آف دا تھنگز دیٹ ہیپنس وین یو گرو اولڈ اینڈ آئی سین دس ان کلینیکل سچویشنس وین اوور یو رن ان ٹو اے مین ان سکسٹیز ود ڈپریشن اٹ از آلموسٹ آلویز اباؤٹ how the man has dealt or not dealt with his son and daughter almost always so here is a share ki zindagi ye to nahi tujhko samara hi na ho zindagi ye to nahi tujhko samara hi na ho kuch na kuch qarz tera humne utara hi na ho but think about this who would say such a thing who would say such a thing کچھ نہ کچھ قرض تیرا ہم نے اتارا ہی نہ ہو دیٹ مینس دا پرسن از اسٹل فیلنگ دیٹ ہی ہیز ناٹ پیڈ دا ڈیوز آف اینڈ ہی ہیز ریمورس گلٹ اینڈ پلیز انڈرسٹینڈ اونلی اے مین ہو از کیپیبل آف لو ہیز ریمورس بیکاز ریمورس ڈز ناٹ ہیپن یو ہرٹ سم بڈی یو ریئلائز یو ڈن سم تھنگ بیڈ یو ڈپرائیو سم بڈی آف دیئر رائٹس اوور یو بٹ دین لو کمز بیک اینڈ یو ریئلائز یو hurt somebody that you have loved. That's when you feel remorse. So remorse betrays the capacity for love and presence of love. Zindagi ye to nahi, tujhko samara hi na ho, kuch na kuch qarz tera humne utara hi na ho. Also, as life quickens towards the end of the game, you know, uh, in football we have four quarters. The game in first quarter is not the same as the game in fourth quarter. It's same 15 minutes. In fourth quarter, the space is, speed is different. Fursat-e kaar, fakat chand ghadiye hai yaaroon. Fursat-e kaar, fakat chand ghadiye hai yaaroon. Ye na socho, ki abhi umar padi hai yaaroon. It's time to act. Kaal kare so aaj kar, aur aaj kare so ab, pal mein par lai hoegi, pahur kare ka kab. So that is the situation. Then, here is, a poet who has the courage to write the following poem. And very amazing, slightly disturbing, spooky poem. Um, I am, as a son, um, puzzled, slightly embarrassed. Uh, as a psychoanalyst, very proud of this poem. I don't want you, but... I don't want you, but... Then, when you don't have to pass, گم سے اپنے حواس پاتا ہوں خود کو کتنا اداس پاتا ہوں ایک خاموشی سی چھائی رہتی ہے جانے کیا دھن سمائی رہتی ہے دل سے بھی گفتگو نہیں ہوتی میں تجھے چاہتا نہیں لیکن لوک ایٹ دا اسٹرکچر دا اسٹرکچر از دا فرسٹ لائن اینڈ دا سکس لائن رائمس تھرڈ اینڈ فورتھ رائم ففتھ اینڈ فورتھ اینڈ ففتھ رائم فرسٹ اینڈ سکس رائم وچ از نیو اسٹرکچر 
मैं तो ये चाहता नहीं लेकिन फिर भी जब पास तू नहीं होती गुम से अपने हवास पाता हूँ खुद को कितना उदास पाता हूँ एक खामोशी सी छाई रहती है जाने क्या धुन समाई रहती है दिल से भी गुफ्तु नहीं होती मैं तुझे चाहता नहीं लेकिन सेकेंड स्टैंड मैं तुझे चाहता नहीं लेकिन फिर भी शब की तवील खिलवत में तेरे औकात सोचता हूँ मैं तेरी हर बात सोचता हूँ मैं कौन से फूल तुझको भाते हैं रंग क्या क्या पसंद आते हैं खो सा जाता हूँ तेरी जन्नत में मैं तुझे चाहता नहीं लेकिन नाउ कम्स दे स्पू की स्टफ मैं तुझे चाहता नहीं लेकिन फिर भी एहसास से निजात नहीं फिर भी एहसास से निजात नहीं सोचता हूं तो रंज होता है दिल को जैसे कोई डुबोता है जिसको इस दर्जा चाहता हूं मैं जिसको इतना सराहता हूं मैं उसमें तेरी सी कोई बात नहीं दिस इज ए करेजियस पोएम टू राइट दिस इज ए करेजियस पोएम फॉर ए पोएट टू राइट सो दिस इज वाई बेस्ड अपॉन द ब्रेथ ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ पोएट्री एंड रेंज the transcendence of gender and the uh, uh, and the uh, expertise and deftness and speed of his writing that i think he made some very significant contributions and i respect and like him as a poet and uh, i think that uh, you know time for a serious revival is here and i'm very grateful as i said to rakshanda parvez Uh, for arranging this event let me conclude by saying this there are two books one book is called zere lab and one book is called harf e ashna these books contain my mother's letters to my father from 1943 five letters before marriage and then during the marriage close to almost 500 letters in two books which are widely read and widely known in urdu speaking circles and occasionally included in literary courses in bachelor's and master's level these letters of my mother are extremely well written romantic thoughtful historically anchored culturally nuanced and speak not only of a particular socio economic class of educated muslim intelligentsia but also in general of a man and woman's relationship and a two lovers living apart and above that of what happens when pain occurs and human loss occurs and we cannot be close to people we love those letters have brought immortality to my mother's name my mother would have become a forgotten figure in the history she would have been like any other poet's wife who was not known and who would have been a minor figure and such a minor footnote now my mother has acquired an independent status of an intelligent woman a letter writer a liberated woman there was another book of my mother's essays publish called andaz e nazar in which there are essays on gandhi there are essays on ismat chuktai's book tiri lakir in which she even talks about oedipus complex and freud which obviously please me a lot uh, and um, and there's an essay about my father in that book also ghar ka bhedi now these three books <coughs> these three books especially the two books of letters who got them published who has made my mother famous there are some people who for various pains and anxieties of their own have sort of maligned my father i asked them who has published those letters who has made this woman immortal because of whom Safiya Akhtar's name is known and has now become immortal. This man kept every single letter she wrote to him. Then hand scribed all 500 letters, convinced a publisher to publish those books. If that is not love, 
what it says. This man's contribution to Urdu poetry may be controversial, may be debatable, but his having made his beloved wife immortal is what speaks to me at deepest level of my edible couple in my mind, my father and my mother. Thank you very much. دو ہزار دو کے آس پاس مجھے یہ لگا کہ ہمیں ایک ایسی جگہ کی ضرورت ہے جو کہ یہ جو بڑے ادارے ہیں جو انجمن ہوتی ہیں یا جو بھارتیہ ہندی پریشت قسم کی جو جگہیں ہوتی ہیں ان سے ہٹ کے ایک سپیس بنائی جائے اور وہ سپیس کچھ اس قسم کی ہو کہ جہاں عام آدمی جن کو اردو میں دلچسپی ہے یا بلکہ کہیے کہ ہندوستانی میں دلچسپی ہے لیکن وہ اس کو کسی اکیڈیمک ریل میں نہیں سمجھنا چاہتے بلکہ ایک عام آدمی کی طرح سمجھنا چاہتے ہیں تو ان کے لیے ایک ایسی جگہ بنائی جائے اور ان کو ایک پورے رینج دی جائے ایکٹیویٹیز کی یعنی کہ کتابوں میں سے ریڈنگز پلیز ڈراموں کی ریڈنگ تھیٹریکل ریڈنگز مختلف قسم کی چیزیں یہاں تک کہ بک ڈسکشنز پینل ڈسکشنز کتابوں کے لانچز پلیز وغیرہ وغیرہ بہت طرح کے ہندوستان سے تو مختلف لوگ آئی ہیں جو کہ پڑھنے والے ہیں شاعر ہیں لکھنے والے ہیں کریٹیو رائٹرز ہیں کئی ایسے لوگ ہیں جن کو صرف دلچسپی ہے اور ہم اور وہ صرف اپنا پیشن شیئر کرنا چاہتے ہیں اردو سے متعلق ایک مرتبہ مثلاً ٹوکیو یونیورسٹی میں جہاں اردو پڑھائی جاتی ہے وہاں کے کچھ طالب علم میں اپنے ایک استاد کے ساتھ آئے اور انہوں نے ایک اردو کا پلے پرزنٹ کیا تو ایک بہت انامس رینج ہے اسپیکرس کی بھی اور مجھے لگتا ہے آڈینس کی بھی ایٹک کی خاصیت یہ ہے کہ یہاں صرف وہی لوگ آتے ہیں جن کو دلچسپی ہوتی ہے یعنی یہاں فلوٹنگ آڈینس بہت کم ہوتی ہے یہاں بڑی دشواری سے آپ گاڑی کو پاک کرتے ہیں سیڑھیاں چڑھتے ہیں اوپر آتے ہیں تو یعنی یہاں ساٹھ ستر لوگ وہی آتے ہیں جن کو واقعی اس سبجیکٹ میں دلچسپی ہے اور مجھے یہ بات اچھی لگتی ہے اس جگہ کی ایک بڑی کوزی بڑی کمپیکٹ جگہ ہے اور یہاں پہ واقعی رسک آتے ہیں سننے کے لیے سمجھنے کے لیے لطف اٹھانے کے لیے موسیقی